All right, now let's get some analysis on this regional conference as well as the provincial conference. We're now joined via Zoom by political analyst Dr. Meji Makhoba. Dr. Makhoba, thank you so much uh, for your time this afternoon. Let's start in Bulukwane. Obviously a clean sweep for Stan uh, Matabata, third term for him. Your reaction? I think it was expected because Matabata and Co have influence in the province and they've managed to represent themselves as pro Ramaphosa. And it was logical that they went to the conference because they've been in power for some time and they know the politics of the province. And it's just a continuation of status quo. Even if Dixon Masemula would have won, it was going to be the same thing. So, But it was expected that Matabata would win because I don't think uh, Masemula represented any shift of politics in the province he did he, i thought i think he lost the opportunity to represent himself as someone who's going to bring fresh ideas in the ANC but it's just a continuation of the status quo Mm. Now, if you look at uh, Dixon Masemula, who contested you know, Matabata in 2014 and lost there too, uh, one then wonders in terms of just a succession plan for the ANC in Bulukwane, is there one? Should there not be one? So that, as you say, we don't have the same kind of leadership styles we've been seeing for several years now. There's no succession plan because right now I think this politicians are uh, ravaged by factionalism. For now, it's all about political survival. And that's why Matabat has gone for, for a third term, because he notices that if he doesn't go for a third term, there might be political implications with his ending the ANC. That's why he went for the third term. So there's no succession at all, because uh, I don't think there's a link between the ANC and the developmental needs of the state. The ANC is still stuck at party politics level. That's how they practice politics. But in terms of articulating a vision for the country, that's where there's a lack. That's why somebody would want to uh, contest for a third term and still be on the anti-corruption mode, even if he has served for, for, for three terms or for two terms, you serve for two terms on the same message of anti-corruption, and you acknowledge that anti-corruption is still a, pro a problem in the province. So it shows that there is one lack of vision, two, there is no direction in terms of succession plans, and this is just going to be the, 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 this, the, the continuation of chaos in the ANC. Let's talk about Denim Caesar now. Of course, his nomination was blocked there by Treasurer General of the ANC, Paul Mashatile, saying he's unable to contest because of the set-aside resolution for the party. Talk to us about the symbolism of that move by the Treasurer General, given just the complexities with the ANC's set-aside policy. I think that's one important thing that the ANC has done uh, to show that if indeed you are influential in the ANC, such as in the in the form of the new season, and then you are being blocked from contesting for leadership, I think from the ANC, that's quite important. But that is not without implications. I think he, he, he feels hard done by the step aside rule. And that actually paints some complicated picture about whether indeed Matabata is pro Ramaphosa, if a uh, Mesiza is quite hard done by the step aside rule, I think it presents a new dimension in terms of their position in province and nationally. Because if he says he's hard done, and at the same time they are saying, "No, oh, this is a pro ANC," I mean pro Ramaphosa province, then it, it kind of brings some complexities. But for the ANC, at least they deserve some credit for that, because if somebody has contested while well, they have uh, allegations of corruption against them, it would mean that their national message of anti-corruption doesn't hold any water. Mm. Now, this province, uh, uh, Limpopo, is one of the first provinces that called for the second term of ANC President Cyril Ramaphosa, of course, joined by three other provinces in the country. You know, uh, but in light of the charges that have been leveled against the ANC President, and as we discussed yesterday, how likely is there going to be a shift in terms of these charges brought forward by Arthur Fraser uh, as we head to the National Elective Conference in December? Uh, politics in the ANC is all about survival. I think if Ramaphosa is found wanting because of those allegations, these comrades are not going to waste time. They are going to reposition themselves because now they can see that his faction at the moment is quite consolidated, even though there are these charges. But once 
the foundation starts shaking, then Ramaphosa is going to be in trouble. They are going to change the position because, as I've said, the ANC politics is not really about the, the heart of the economy, the development of this country. It's about party politics and how individuals can line up their pockets to develop themselves. So if, Ramap if, if, if Ramaphosa is found to have it is charged and they say he must step aside, I think there's going to be a strategy because I think the, 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 the alignment with Ramaphosa is the understanding that his faction at the moment is quite strong as compared to the Red Forces. So if something wrong were to happen, they are not going to waste time. They're going to withdraw their support for him and find somebody who can consolidate their factionalism. Let's shift our focus now to what's happening in Johannesburg. Of course, we know that that uh, regional conference is uh, going ahead. We heard uh, a little bit earlier on from the ANC Gauteng chairperson, current uh, ANC chairperson David Makura, saying that uh, he's saying to the region, win back the hearts of the voters. How likely is that uh, to happen with uh, you know the new leadership that is currently at the forefront uh, to take over this region in Johannesburg, given how how dismally they lost in the last election. I think the disintegration of the ANC is going to continue for the things that he has said. He was pulling on his members that the ANC is not about individuals, it's about the development of this country. And I think since they've been in power, even Kautin, that has been missing. It has all been about individuals lining up their pockets. And his message would have made sense if they report to us that this is what we have done in the past years to develop this these communities. His message is very strong, but it comes from a wrong place because their record can't speak to that message. If that message was 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 supported by concrete plans of implementation, where we see that lives have been changed and factions in the ANC are about ideology and policy development, not about individuals, then the message would have carried some weight. But at the moment, we we would continue to see the disintegration of the ANC because the problem of corruption has not been sufficiently addressed. Mm. Dr. Makhoba, as we wrap up this conversation, especially, you know, given what you're saying, those last words about, uh, you know, certain things that are not being addressed, what role does then this region uh, have, you know, in the run up to the provincial conference and ultimately the national conference in, uh, in December? I think they are quite clear that they are pro Ramaphosa, and I think for for that reason, Ramaphosa would be quite secure because Houghton is still aligned with him, like Limpopo province, and I think that's the, the, the influence they'll bring to the national conference. That is where that they're going to just strengthen the hands of Ramaphosa to continue for the second term, and I think that's how far their contribution can be. But that can be should be looked at in line with what is going to happen in the next. 30 days when if Ramaphosa is charged or if the charges fall, uh, fall apart and then that's where we can see the influences of all these regions is going to be pronounced because there's his second term is dependent on how he deals with all these political scandals and if he's managed he managed to get out of these political scandals maybe the second term will be secure but that's something that we'll wait and see. Mm. Political analyst Dr. Mechi uh, Makhoba, thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Thanks for having me.